Well, we're at the end of the first week of the year, and uh, we'll be looking at Isaiah chapter 20 today. So again, got a first week of 2022 behind you, a good week of solid Bible reading, I pray, and that you're looking forward to continuing uh, in the major prophets for the rest of the year. Personally, I can tell you, I hope I never have a ministry like Isaiah has in Isaiah chapter 20. Uh, it's um, uh, startling, and oftentimes God asks his uh, prophets to not only speak his word, but show his word. And that's what we have here today. We have Isaiah showing, not just speaking, warning from God. Chapter 20, only six verses, very short chapter here. Goes with chapter 19. It's kind of the closeout of uh, what was promised in chapter 19. Uh, to happen in the near term, it says in the year that the commander in chief who was sent by Sargon, king of Assyria, came to Ashdod and fought against it and captured it. So what's going on here? This is about 711 BC. And uh, Egypt has been uh, proclaiming, Egypt has been saying that they're going to be an ally in this fight against Assyria. Uh, they have been boasting about it. Uh, Ashdod is now uh, has allied themselves. Judah and Jerusalem have allied themselves with Egypt. The uh, Assyrian army has come down as far as Ashdod, and they're resisting. And we know historically that they called out for help from Judah and from Egypt and from Ethiopia and the other countries to come and help them. And guess what? Nobody helped. So even though Egypt was boasting, uh, they uh, did not come through when they were needed most, and Ashdod was overwhelmed, not by the king himself, not by Sargon III, I think this is the king of Assyria, but by his second-in-command. He sent his uh, chief of staff, and he overcame the city. So at that time, the Lord spoke by Isaiah, the son of Amoz, saying, Go and loose the sackcloth from your waist, and take the sandals off your feet. So Isaiah may have been wearing sackcloth at this point uh, in mourning, uh, mourning over the fate of the northern tribes, perhaps uh, even mourning over the fate of Moab. He did so and walked naked and barefoot. So here is, here is Isaiah, prophet of the Lord. He uh, takes the sackcloth off of him. He may have been wearing a loincloth. Uh, so naked, relatively speaking, or he could have been absolutely naked and vulnerable as captives were marched into captivity, often uh, naked and without sandals, showing their vulnerability, their complete mercy at the um, uh, kindness, uh, the grace, we could say, of the capturing general. Lord said to my servant Isaiah, has walked naked and barefoot for three years as a sign and a portent, potent against Egypt and Cush. So here is a warning that God is giving, not only through the mouth of Isaiah, but through his very appearance, to not rely on Egypt and Cush. The picture, I think, here is that Egypt and Cush are going to be taken into captivity. That Egypt and Cush, people from those countries, are going to be seen to be walking naked and barefoot into Assyria. Because remember, Assyria's policy for captive nations was to replace them take the captive nation into captivity and replace them with others. So shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptian captives and the Cushite exiles, both the young and the old, naked and barefoot, with buttocks uncovered, the nakedness of Egypt. Then they shall be dismayed and alarmed because of Cush their hope and Egypt their boast. So again, here is a warning, uh, a dire warning, not to ally yourself with these nations that are going to ultimately be taken into captivity. They're going to be humiliated. They're going to be embarrassed. They're going to be marched in weakness and utter dependence. And the inhabitants of the coastland, so Ashdod is part of the uh, Philistine area. That's the uh, area that we understand to be today the strip, the Gaza Strip. Uh, Ashdod is in the northern section of that, about 35 miles from Jerusalem. So these are the people of the coastland. We'll say in that day, behold, this is what happened to those in whom we hoped. 
to whom we fled for help to be delivered from the king of Assyria. And we, how shall we escape? This is an object lesson. It's an object lesson for Egypt, for Israel. It's an object lesson for Judea, to whom Isaiah is ultimately prophesying. He is showing them the result of trying to depend on an alliance with Egypt and Ethiopia. They're going to be marched out naked and barefoot by their captors. Don't rely on them. Learn the lesson from Ashdod. Don't ally yourself with these whose destiny is to be taken captive. So brothers and sisters, short chapter, uh, short video today. Again, over and over, the Lord is showing us to depend on him alone, to rely on him alone. Not our own ingenuity, not on our ability to make alliances with people around us, but ultimately to depend on him and him alone. This isn't to say we're not to take prudent matters. This isn't to say that we're not to take uh, precaution. But it is to say that our prudence and our precaution are only as successful as the Lord determines they'll be successful. And we need to learn that lesson and we need to live by it to ultimately depend on him while we take measures that maybe are wise or prudent, uh, measures that are indicated in his word. So I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you are uh, looking forward to 2022 and that part of your plans for 2022 includes staying in the word. So God bless you, brothers and sisters, and I'll see you on Monday.